Okay, this is section number three, part three. Uh, this is going to cover Mansu Musa. It's also going to, we're going to talk about Timbuktu and also about Songhai, the great empire of Songhai. The people of Ghani were not the only group in West Africa. Another group of people ruled an area that was located along the, the Niger River further west of Ghana. The kingdom of Mali was small, but its leader, Sudiyasha, had other plans for his kingdom. In 1230, Sudiyasha led an army against the Almorids and conquered Ghana. Now, Mali was in control of the rich trans Saharan trade routes. Sundiata worked to improve agriculture and make his land wealthy and powerful. However, it is his grandson, Mansa Musa, who made Mali into a legendary empire known for its wealth and knowledge. Mansa Musa was a Muslim, which was very common in Mali by the 1200s. In fact, most of Mali's rulers and at least half of the common folk had become Muslims by this time period. Because of Mansa Musa's influence, Islam spread throughout West Africa, gaining many new believers. Mansa Musa ruled for about 25 years from 1312 to about 1337. During that time, Mali used this wealth to create great centers of learning and Islamic culture. One of the most important of these cities was Timbuktu. Mansa Musa built universities, libraries, palaces, and mosques. A mosque is a Muslim place of worship. Which these made Timbuktu one of the most important cities in Africa during the 13 and 1400s. Mansa Musa was a very devout Muslim and took his religion seriously. One of the many duties of every Muslim is to take a religious journey called a Hajj to the holy city of Mecca at least once in their lifetime. In 1324, Mansu Musa set out for Mali to make his Hajj. Of course, millions of people had made this journey before, but none did it quite in the same style as Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa was the ruler of a wealthy empire, and he wanted to let the world know how great he was. His entourage included 60,000 people led by 80 camels that carried over two tons of gold. Well, needless to say, wherever Mansa Musa went, he drew quite a crowd. Not only because of the size of his caravan, but because he was literally throwing his money away. As he passed, he would greet them by tossing gold uh, coins into the crowd. This not only made Mansa Musa the most popular guy in the Sahara, but also made Mali world famous for its wealth. Soon, thousands of merchants were pouring into Mali, and scholars from Europe, uh, Morocco, and the Middle East were coming to visit the great city of Timbuktu. Not, nothing lasts for uh, long, however, and shortly after the death of Mansu Musa died in 1337, the great empire of Mali began to slow death of its own. Then, in the 1400s, the people of Songhai, one of the regions, uh, excuse me, one of the regions under Mali's control, saw its chance to rebel. They not only won their freedom, but went on to conquer Mali, creating the biggest empire West Africa had ever seen. Songhai even grew strong enough to take control of some of the major salt mines along its northern borders. By controlling both ends of the gold salt trade, the treasury of Songhai grew fat from the taxes they collected. Like Ghana and Mali, Songhai used their wealth to build its cities into major centers of learning and culture. Cities like Dijing and Timbuktu continue to grow as Songhai's rulers built even larger libraries, universities, and mosques, which attracted thousands of people from all over the world. Greed and power began to weaken the empire from within. Many of the kings abused their power and ruled with fear. Harsh rulers rarely lived past a decade before they were assassinated. This made the government unstable as power passed from one leader to the next. By the 1500s, Songhai's power was rotting with wit from within. As Songhai had grown more powerful, it threatened its rivals across the Sahara, the kingdom of Morocco. The Moroccans decided to put an end to the threat by launching an invasion. So in 1578, the Moroccan, Moroccan ruler, who was so confident of crushing Songhai that he threw together an army of 20,000 men and marched him through the blazing Sahara. He is quoted as saying, I have resolved to attack Sudan. It is an exceedingly rich country and will furnish us with the large taxes, and we shall thus be enabled to give greater importance to the Mohammedan armies. That's his own armies. 
mostly his army died on the, uh, on the way to invasion, uh, and the invasion itself was called off. Two years later, though, the Moroccans had learned from their mistakes, and they put together an elite force armed with guns, who took on a much larger Songhai army, only armed with spears. This time, Songhai was crushed, and the once great empire fell apart.